Welcome to PaxX TV, your destination for passenger experience news. We're celebrating the start of a new year with this special Aviation Geek episode dedicated to highlighting the most exciting aerospace news outside of the commercial airline industry. First up, the European Space Agency is rather keen to see man return to the moon surface with robots. Now, during a recent two-day symposium in the Netherlands, some 200 scientists and researchers from 28 nations gathered together to discuss how lunar exploration could be a sustainable international endeavor. One idea regularly floated is the creation of a moon colony by the year 2030. And of this moon base would actually be a pivotal part of the roadmap for future human Mars missions. Now I know that moon colonies have been teased for years, including when I was a very little girl, but the European Space Agency says it's serious about working with the international community to make it a reality. Next we'll have an update on airships, jet packs, and drone technology, but first a quick word from our sponsor, GoGo. -Go. Global passengers demand live TV, and now it's available from GoGo. -Go. GoGo -Go TV broadcasts real-time content directly to flyers' devices or seatback systems. With the availability for custom channel lineups, flyers will feel at home, wherever they travel. And since GoGo -Go TV leverages 2KU, the best-performing, most cost-efficient IFC technology in the market, it meets the needs of your business and your customers. Download the brochure to find out more. GoGo, -Go, the catalyst for advancing aviation. Swiss pilot Yves Rossi has been wowing the aerospace industry for years, ever since he started showcasing his jetpack technology in 2007. Fast forward to October 2015, and the so-called Jetman and his protege teamed with Emirates to execute a phenomenal stunt, a choreographed aerial display involving one of the airline's Airbus A380s. Flying at 4,000 feet in two holding patterns, the A380 was met by the Jetman team after they had been deployed from a helicopter wearing their jet-powered wingsuits. Now, the amazing feat was caught on tape, and formal videos were released of the event in early November, wowing the world. But perhaps Rossi's greatest feat is his ability to inspire a whole new generation of aviation geeks to dream big and make their av dreams come true, which is pretty awesome. Awesome. Could 2006 be the year where we see a return of the airship? Our correspondent Marianne Simpson reports. At a former RAF outpost in Bedfordshire, UK, and hangar originally built 100 years ago, a very modern company is working with advanced green technologies to develop Airlander 10, a 300-foot hybrid airship designed to carry passengers and cargo. Runway Girl Network caught up with Andy Barton, Business Development Director, Civil Markets for Hybrid Airships, to learn more about the project. It combines the properties of an airship with those of an airplane and a helicopter as it uses three different types of lift. So we have buoyant lift from the lighter than air helium gas in the hull, just like an airship. We've got aerodynamic lift from the aerofoil created by the Airlander's multi-hull airship shape, just like the wing on an airplane. And we have powered lift produced by the vector thrust available from each of its engines. 91 meters in length, 43 meters wide, and 26 meters tall, Airlander 10 has a volume of more than 38,000 cubic meters. Hybrid Air Vehicles envisions the massive airship being used for geological surveys, transport of very large objects, for example in remote site construction projects, and for passenger transport and sightseeing. For decades, we've tried to make traditional airships viable for civil passenger, civil freight market, but the fundamental challenge to efficient use of airships is their need to be at equilibrium. That's to say, the payload on board must be kept within a narrow weight window that almost exactly counters the buoyant lift of the airship. This limits their practical use because it severely complicates ground handling and you also need a large ground crew. On Airlander 10, because we've got both the free lift of the helium of the airship and we've got the aerodynamic lift of the shape, the aerofoil shape we have, we always operate heavier than equilibrium. So the Airlander hybrid aircraft design gives us the best of both worlds. We've got the fuel efficiency and comfort of an airship with the practicality and ground handling efficiency of an aeroplane. 
While exact cabin configurations are likely to vary by operator and mission, Hybrid Air Vehicles has developed a recommended layout for Airlander 10 as a starting point. That's described as a spacious 48-passenger arrangement with half-forward and half-rear-facing seats. The civil-use Airlander 10 is expected to come to market in 2018. Runway Girl Network recently attended the big international CES show in Las Vegas, Nevada, where some classic airline passenger experience news broke. Panasonic Avionics unveiled its new waterfront business class seat for the very first time. Now, the seat has more bells and whistles than I can list here, but suffice it to say, it features everything from a massive 4K monitor to inductive charging for passengers' own devices to an array of controllable heating and LED lighting options, really giving complete control control of the environment to the passenger. But unmanned aerial vehicles caught the attention of CES attendees in a big way as well. One company called Intelligent Energy unveiled a hydrogen fuel cell powered range extender, extending the flying time for drones. Together with a regular battery, the fuel cell can mean several hours worth of drone flying time versus the usual 20 minutes. Now that's obviously great news for drone enthusiasts, but it's also great news for search and rescue and wildlife observation agencies, which are using drones to both find people and to track animals like whales. Airlines are also putting drones to good use, with EasyJet garnering some headlines recently for using drones in aircraft inspections to shorten maintenance times. So with the ultimate promise of moon colonies and the development of jetpacks, airships and drone technology, the future is clearly bright for the aerospace industry. Thanks so much for joining us on PaxX TV. Join us again next time for all the latest news on the passenger experience. It's a great day, I'm feeling good, oh. The possibilities of what I could, oh.